What's up everybody and welcome to a new video. And in this video we're going to cover how decision tree pruning works. So first of all, uh, let's answer the question why we even need to prune trees. Namely, we need to prune them because they uh, tend to overfit the training data. And to understand why that is, let's look at this flowchart of this basic decision tree algorithm. And this flowchart here we have already uh, covered in some previous videos, so I will put the links to those videos into the video description. But just to give uh, a quick recap, what we do here is first we check if the data is pure. If it is, then we create a leaf and stop. And if the data is not pure, then we determine all the potential splits. After that, we determine the best one out of those potential splits. And then we split the data accordingly into two partitions. And then uh, finally, we repeat this process for both partitions of the data. And we keep doing that until all partitions of the data are eventually pure. And we therefore then reach the stop field for all recursive calls of the decision tree algorithm. And that's exactly where the problem lies. Namely, the algorithm uh, comes only to a stop when each partition of the data is pure. So in case the different classes aren't clearly separated from each other, or in case there are outliers, the resulting decision tree of this algorithm will simply have too many layers, i.e. it will overfit the training data. So uh, its ability then will be its ability to generalize well to new unseen data will therefore then be uh, diminished. To see this problem in action, let's look at some example data. So here we have two classes, so we are going to do a classification task. And uh, those two classes are clearly separated from each other. Namely, uh, if x is smaller or equal to 5, then uh, the class or the dot is an orange dot, otherwise it is blue. So if we then apply this algorithm to this uh, data set, then we would get uh, such a decision tree. And then if we apply this decision tree then to some testing data, then we can see that it classifies all those examples correctly. So uh, in this case where uh, the different classes are clearly separated uh, from each other, then we can actually use this a decision tree algorithm to create a decision tree that is actually not overfitting. So it generalizes well to new unseen data. But now let's uh, just add one orange outlier here. So this uh, orange dot here has a X that, an X value that is slightly larger than what, uh, than what is uh, normal for orange dots. And in this case, uh, this decision tree would still be ideal because it still captures uh, the general distinction between those two classes. Namely that uh, if x is smaller than 5, then it's orange, otherwise it's blue. But now since uh, there is this outlier here in this right partition here of the data, this right partition is uh, still not pure. So the algorithm is going to uh, keep splitting the data, or in other words, it's going to create uh, more layers so that it can then separate out this one outlier here. And the resulting decision tree could, for example, look like this. So in this case, then, uh, if we then apply this decision tree to the testing data, then we can see now that it here, uh, it misclassifies these uh, three blue dots as being orange. So uh, the decision tree now uh, overfits the training data and its ability to generalize to new unseen data is now somewhat diminished. So to get around this problem, we now need to prune this decision tree. And there are two different types of pruning. The first one that we're going to cover is called pre-pruning. And here we simply make sure that the tree uh, doesn't get too deep in the first place. And one approach for implementing 
uh, this pre-pruning for example is by specifying a minimum number of samples or data points that need to be present in the data. So if there are less or if the number of data points is less than this minimum number, then we create a leaf even though the data, the data might not be pure yet. And in that case then we create the leaf based on uh, which class appears most often. Or uh, if the classes appear equally often, then we simply randomly pick one. So in our case here, if we set the minimum, num uh, minimum samples number to five, then we won't be asking this last question here. And that's because at this point, uh, the partition of the data will only contain or will contain less than five data points. So to see that, let's filter down this training data based on the questions that we need to ask in the tree to get to this uh, stage. So we're only looking at data points where the x is bigger than five, but smaller than uh, 5.4 and then where the y is bigger than 7.5. So we are only looking at these data points here. And here then, as you can see, uh, since there are three, uh, three blue dots and only one orange dot, uh, the leaf is go then going to be uh, blue. And now, uh, as you can see, uh, for data points where the x is bigger than 5, uh, the tree always predicts that the class is blue. So uh, essentially this tree is now or is now making the same predictions as the tree that we got when there was no outlier uh, in the train there. So this tree again now predicts all those testing examples correctly and it can therefore generalize well to new unseen data even though there was uh, this outlier in uh, the training data. So that's one approach for implementing pre-pruning. Another approach is to specify a maximum depth for the, uh, for the tree. So to specify a maximum number of layers that the tree should have. And in that case, we initialize a counter, a counter at the beginning of the algorithm uh, to keep track of how many layers uh, have, already be, uh, have already been created. And this counter then gets increased by one every time we split the data. So in our case, uh, the, the algorithm without pre-pruning created a tree that had four layers. Therefore, if we set the maximum depth to three, then again, we won't be asking this last question here. And that's because after this question or after this decision node, uh, for those partitions of the data, the counter will already be free, so then the max depth is reached and we will create a leaf uh, based on which class appears most often. So <clears throat> to see what those leaves are going to be, let's again filter down uh, the train data so that we can see uh, those two partitions. So <clears throat> we are only looking uh, again just at uh, data points where the x is uh, bigger than 5 uh, but then uh, smaller than 5.4. Uh, so <clears throat> we are only looking at these data points here. And for the data points that have a y that is smaller than 7.5, so those ones here, here there are only blue dots, so accordingly then the leaf would be blue. And for the data points that have a y that is bigger than 7.5. So for those here, again, we have three blue dots and only one orange. So the leaf is blue again. So <clears throat> now we have uh, created the same tree that we got with the min samples approach. And therefore, uh, it predicts all those testing data points again correctly. And it can generalize well to new un unseen data, even though there is this outlier in the training data. So with that now we have seen two approaches for implementing pre-pruning. So now just for the sake of com completeness, let's incorporate all those different approaches or base cases into this flowchart here without cluttering, uh, without cluttering it up too much. So in that case, let's rewrite it like this. 
So uh, if one of those base cases applies, so if either the data is pure, uh, the max def is reached, or the min samples is not reached, then we're going to create a leaf. Otherwise, we are going to split the data. Okay, so that's the first type of pruning. The other type is called post pruning. And here in contrast to pre pruning, uh, we let the tree go deep. And then only after that, then we prune it back. So how does that work? So well, first of all, we need a training data set and a validation data set. And then as usual, we apply our algorithm to the training data to uh, create uh, our decision tree. And again, we are not worrying that it gets too deep, so we are not doing any pre-pruning. And just as a side note, we could actually also could do first some pre-pruning and then after that post-pruning, but in this simple case here, it's not uh, necessary. Okay, so now that we have created this tree, which is overfitting the training data, so which has too many layers, we can now start to, uh, to prune it. And therefore we start at the deepest layer. So at the deepest, uh, a decision node at the deepest layer. And if there would be uh, uh, several decision nodes at the deepest layer, so for example, if the tree would also go uh, deeper here uh, on in this direction, then we simply take the leftmost decision node. So we start the post pruning with the leftmost uh, decision node at the deepest layer. And what we now want to know is here uh, is should we keep this decision node or should we instead already create a leaf at this stage in the tree? And to answer this question, we obviously first need to know what uh, that leaf should be. Or in other words, what we want to know is uh, what leaf would have uh, would the decision tree algorithm, uh, algorithm have created if it wouldn't have created this decision node. And this is uh, straightforward to do. Namely, we again simply need to uh, filter down our training data based on the questions that we need to ask in a tree to get to this stage. So again, we are just looking at data points where x is uh, bigger than 5, but smaller than 5.4, and then where the y is bigger than 7.5. So we are only looking at these data points here. And again, since there are three uh, blue dots and only one orange, uh, the leaf would be blue. And here, just as a side note, uh, if we would do if we would do a regression task, then we wouldn't pick the class that appears most often, but simply we would take the average value of those data points. Okay. So now, uh, in order to answer the question if we should keep this decision node or if we inst uh, instead should replace it with the leaf, we now need the validation data set. And what we want to know is, is this decision node better at predicting the respective examples in the validation data set, or is the leaf better? So therefore, let's again filter down this validation data set based on those questions. So we are only looking at these data points here, and now we can check if the decision node is better, uh, better or the leaf. And therefore, we're going to check how many errors they are making. So let's start with the decision node. So it for, for data points where the y is bigger than 8.4, so uh, for those ones here, it will predict that it is blue. And as you can see, this dot here is uh, actually blue. But then for the data points where y is smaller than 8.4, so for those ones here, it's going to predict that they are orange, but as you can see, those three blue dots here, uh, those three dots are actually blue. So the decision node is going to make uh, three errors. And the leaf, on the other hand, is going to predict that all those data points here are blue, uh, which is correct in this case. So the leaf is going to make zero errors. So now, since the leaf is better at predicting those examples than the decision node, so it makes less errors, we're going to uh, replace the decision node with this leaf. And this approach or this procedure is called reduced error pruning. So if the leaf is of the number of errors for the leaf are less 
then or equal to the number of errors for the decision node, then uh, we are going to replace the decision node with leave. Otherwise, we're going to keep the decision node. And this procedure, now we simply uh, repeat for all the remaining uh, decision nodes in the tree. And again, just as a side note, if we would do a regression task, then we wouldn't count uh, the number of errors, but we could, for example, then simply uh, calculate, for example, the mean squared error. Okay, so now let's finish up this post pruning here. So we are going to uh, now check this decision node. And here, as you can see, the decision node and the leaf are making the same predictions. And in this case, both are making zero, uh, zero errors. So again, we're going to replace the decision node with the leaf. And here for this uh, question here, we have the same uh, situation. So we're again replacing the decision node. And then for this last uh, decision node, I have then actually written down how many uh, orange and blue dots there are. And as you can see, uh, the decision node predicts all those uh, data points in the validation data set correctly, so it makes zero errors. Uh, the leaf, on the other hand, predicts that all those data points are blue, which is not the case, as you can see. And since there are 154 orange dots, the leaf is making 154 errors. So in this case, we are not replacing the decision node. So this is what the tree looks like after post pruning. And as you can see, it's the same tree that we got when there was no outlier in the data set and the training data. So again, this tree now predicts all the testing data, set, uh, data points correctly, and therefore it can generalize well to new unseen data, even though there was this uh, outlier in the training data. And with that now, we have reached the end of this video. And if you want to know how to implement post pruning from scratch uh, in code, then you can check out my next video. So thanks for watching and hopefully I will see you in the next video.